good evening, friends. We're taking a break from Pokemon action to do the history of Wrap It Up, Rufus, and how they formed and connect for our chart. Okay, the members of Wrap It Up at the time of their debut album were. Michael Michaels, his brother Rick Michaels, Cam Yankovic, Michael Ferris, Debbie Hutchins, Gloria Lobo, and Tiffany Asp. Originally, I did have a couple of members be Debbie and a couple be Gloria, but to simplify things for you all, that's how you change the name to it. So bear with me if I accidentally uh, slip back to their own names. Okay. Uh, how do I count with all these names I just threw? Various artists names together like Michael Michael's name is either Michael Jackson combined with George Michael and I just say an S. That's more or less how I count with the names for them. Anyway, the early storyline. As I have written down my future target folder, goes that uh, Michael Michaels was addicted to drugs for a little bit, but the other man, his friends, were trying to get him some help, and they were successful. He wanted to do an anti-drug thing, and that's about the time I came across that Beware Me My Friend poem, I had them set it to music. I know it was a very radical idea at the time, but to me it would make more sense than just throwing Wrap It Up out there to compete against LNH and the other future target groups without really having a history. Okay, their debut album is Wrap It To You, or was Wrap It To You. I kind of did as a, one of those puzzles in which it has pictures of the benefit. Oh, so that's a record player with someone uh, scratching on it for Wrap It Then To You. I had planned for them to do on this first album. Besides the towel track was Pump Up the Volume, Fish Net, One More Try, Anything For You, Shattered Dreams, Make It Real, Real, Source Speed, Beware Me My Friend, Parents Just Don't Understand, Super Sonic, Twist, Mikey Mix Part 1, Mikey Mix Part 2, The Nightmare is Child's Play, Don't Worry Be Happy, and some little gag that they have on most of their albums called Wrapping It Up. Part 1 was just kind of a group introduction for them. And A Nightmare is Child's Play was kind of a parody of uh, DJ Jesse Jeff and the Fresh Prince's A Nightmare on My Street is a very good one. I probably won't record it for you all. But anyway, and two versions of Monkey was because when George Michael released Monkey, there were a couple of remixes, and I thought they would enjoy doing it. They end up getting parts one and two on their tape, 
and because I haven't came up with L and H for it, part three is on L and H is the hit twenty one part one. Uh, because this was so early in my future chart year, I didn't have very much competition, so most of the songs end up hitting their win by default. And things like that. So, late, uh, no, I think I had uh, their second album planned halfway through 89. Because a certain rap artist, Dane Lee Tom Loke, had a song called Wild Thing Out. I thought that would be okay for them to do. I don't know why. <clears throat> but uh, that ended up being the title track to the second album, Wild Thing. Now, I Ridley and Crudely draw, drew a screenshot from the old video game Kicks to be the album cover for that. And they had a neighbor, Laura Duetley, they end up showing up with the group. And Wild Thing has a power track, Once Upon a Time in Goodbye City, somewhere out there. I beg your pardon, being Concan's version, with all kinds of samples within it. All she wants is, sure you know it's true. Because they didn't care that Miller Vanilli would later found out to be lip singing their songs. I do all. Well, I actually sing over the demos, but to me it's like the same thing I would do them for the future chart. My voice, but these characters performing it on stage. Besides, what's the big deal about Miller Vanilla? The Chipmunks don't sing their own songs. The Archies didn't. The Monkeys didn't at first. Anyway, everybody have fun tonight. Bobby Brown's Don't Be Cruel, Def Leppard's Rocket, Hands to Heaven, Wild Wild Charts being a parody of Escape Club's Wild Wild West. Now that parody I really do love and I'll probably sing it for you all eventually. When the children cry, surrender to me. I'll see your eyes, all wound up, and wrapping up part two, I don't really remember what their inspiration for that part of the series was. And Once Upon a Time in Go Back City is a parody of um, Huey Lewis's Once Upon a Time in New York City from the Albrain Company track. More or less talking about how they end up meeting up with L and H early enough in their career to get off of the made up record label I originally had them on and become part of a subdivision of Rogue Star releases called the Scratchers. I don't seem to have any of the Scratchers little icon on any of the tapes now, but it did kind of look more or less like the same record used on the Rapid to you, only very smaller. Anyway, uh, most of these songs hit number one until um, the point system and the flip coin dice roll thing was introduced. 2011, 91 to uh, them, and to us. Um, main difference is 
when they released Surrender to Me, that was kind of their wedding song, so I paired Michael with Debbie, Michael Michaels with Debbie Hutchins, Rick Michaels with Gloria Lobos, Sam Yankovic with Tiffany Nestle, Michael Ferris with Laura Duetley. I don't remember where I came up with that last name. I think it might have been someone from Breed that I borrowed. I don't know. Uh, and the only other thing that happened during this album was a strange coincidence that they had a role in the Breakers on Five soundtrack. They had them do um, Con Cans, I Can Answer That. But I decided to throw on a little plot twist for them. Have a little bit of delay in their third album. I have them set up the video to everybody have fun tonight take place in a roller ring. They weren't really using their instruments, just cardboard cutouts, more or less. But what uh, Rick wasn't counting on was a maniac roller skater cutting them off and he ended up smashing into a wall. More or less breaking his arm. So here they are playing a third album and poor Rick is in a cast. What did they do? They released their first two songs from the next album, Acapella. Now, I didn't actually record the songs Acapella, and though I wish I could have. But the first releases from the third album were going to be A Lack Stars Always and In the still of the night, I've forgotten who did the original. But think about it. this is 2011. There, or 91. There were no a cappella versions of In the Still of the Night out at the time. So I had to use the five. Well, the original version that I had. There was no Boys and Men that far back. So, uh, Wrap Around the Clock was done. And this is one of my favorite album covers. I actually drew a jukebox on here with the tracks of the songs, well, with all the songs mentioned on here. Wrap Around the Clock. Always, um, she drives me crazy. Rap on being a parody of Rock On. Hey, don't forget my number. Let's go all the way. Part time lover. Yeah, you all answered medley. Was a good idea, bad idea. It's not actually recorded on the tape. Word up, still the night, that dance. When I see you smile, blame it on the rain, heart and soul, and a remix of Let the Music Play, and more or less, wrapping up part three with an acapella intro scan of all the songs on this one. Wrap around the clock, obviously, as a parody of Rock Around. So, um, believe it or not, the feature chart didn't treat this album very well. And I didn't do a weekly album chart at the time. But what I kept noticing is every time one of our artists 
was thinking they were going to overtake Grandpa Grandpa Fox, they would have another dropout and boost the points of the outlaw. Eventually, Grandpa Grandpa Fox did end up being outlaw of the year for um, 2012. I know I need to do a special video telling how our future car ran. Now I will get to it. I don't know if I need to continue introducing the future charts so we can then go back and do that or not. But anyway, they were slightly disappointed that no number ones from this album, but it was an album of the year. To me, it was one of the best future car albums I recorded at the time. Of course, I put a lot of thought in these future card albums, thinking, well, I would want to listen to it. I wanted to, you know, if I was put an album. Okay, their fourth album. I'm not really sure why I called it Keeping You All In Our Prayers, but I just wanted to make sure you understood that I don't know if God was really working through my future groups or not. But some of these situations happen too bizarre not for him to have some kind of influence on it. So, keeping you all in our prayers was released in 93 our time, 2013 theirs. With Stop to Love, Rumors, Dancing in the Street, Being the Mamas in the Poppins version, believe that or not, instead of Daisy, Bully, and um, um, the guy from Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. And Sing Hammer's Prey, of course, with an album like that, you expect a couple of songs mentioned. Janet Jackson's Stare of the World. Effects of Love with Stevie B. Your Twin Fires Fantasy. Duran Duran, Save a Prayer. Uh, an interesting Pierre Gabriel song, or at least I found it interesting at the time, called This is a Picture. Uh, I got the rapper from one of Jean's CDs. And Thompson Twins, Hold Me Now. And Seductions, You're My One and Only. And Nothing Go On But The Rent, which I got from one of my dance remix albums I had. Wrapping up part four, I'm also not too familiar what they had in mind behind it. That did have quite a few number ones. Stuff to Love, Stay of the World, and Nothing Going On But The Rent. I thought it was a very interesting album at this time. Okay. I wasn't expecting to make it through those albums, but hey. Yeah, we come to the time frame which I entered the chart myself. According to my records, that I kept here, I kind of had two identities in my fantasy world. Uh, I think I mentioned the space events idea. Guess who was the Head of those. I was Space Flyer 1.1. Yay. It was my job to defend the galaxy against Predictor and Inventor flying around their spacecraft known as a brick wall. You can tell I wasn't very original with names. <clears throat> uh, 
But I was kind of taking a break from being a space defender. Just uh, hanging back, doing the future card. And all of a sudden, I said I might as well get involved myself. So I call myself Rufus based on a name of what's called in gym class. And pieced together a self titled album. With Chicago's beginnings, White Lion's Weight, Aerosmith's Angel, that being from the permanent location. Genesis Tonight, Tonight, Tonight. That's a long one from the Invisible Festival. Only Time Can Heal the Wounded. And my own little take on There Is a Way Out because I wrote the song to start with. And I did do a parody of a sweet song involving a phone number. I'd rather not uh, read that out on the air. I know it doesn't have the aerial code, but still, some people might try to figure it out. Careless Whisper. It was a six-minute version from Wham's Make It Big album. I learned that, how to sing that in Middle school, I think it was. So I, I liked it, and though it really didn't suit me at the time, it still doesn't. I came up with this strange parody called Angels in the Zen you know, Xenophobe. You would never believe that it was a Xenophobe by, um, I can't remember his name. Then I found, I made my own little parody of Radar Love called Radar Lock, based on a video game. Stevie B's Broken Hearted, I just kind of liked the way it was sung. And Toto's Pamela, you know, that, that first album I made. Being myself. And yes, I do have a little identification slip. J. Rufus Marshall now. <laughs> For when I eventually left to the next one. But I'm not there yet. Uh, I think the songs dig rather well, I know. Beginnings, Tonight, 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 that phone number song, and Great Art Lock hit number one. Hmm. But I was still in a separate slot when uh, Wrap It Up did their fifth album. This one, they called Wrapping Up Part 5, the biggest hit so far. And I kind of took the cover of the first four albums and tacked them on there. They had uh, My Kind of Girl, 9.9, but they face 9.95. The Lear Not came from a Terrell soundtrack, and that was April's idea. I wasn't sure what to think of the song when I first heard it. Heard it by Gun to like it. One more night. I was still cons. I do you from the dead. Coming out of the dark. Boy, it's the fine. Can't have Rick Michael do the vocal. You really I thank everyone for um, helping them out. Mia yeah, Koopa is enigmas. Uh, back on line what's next test. What you gonna do about it? The remix from New Kids on the Block 
no more games screen with that one. Or as they started calling it because it did so well, what are you going to do about the ream? Move to move, what's con can? The secret, ancient evenings is the glass tiger song. But I like it. King of Stage from Bobby Brown's first album. Good Love is what's done acapella. Record acapella from Bobby McFerrin's Simple Pleasures album. Still Here is Information Society from the Peace and Love Incorporated album. And really, that suited Wrap It Up at the time. And for the most part, that ended up being the closing point for the show. And as I said, I concluded with wrapping up with up part five, biggest hit so far. Uh, 9.95 was a hit. My, and surprisingly, my Koopa and What You Gonna Do About the Remix turned out being one of the biggest singles ever had by future part chart groups pieced together. Might be by luck. Or whatever, those two songs just stuck around a long time. Uh, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and cut this off and start the next part of the story. I'll see you in a few.